Hello guys, Jermaine here and welcome to this second video looking at code generation using Dart. So in the last video, we wrote a basic builder which took a text file and created a copy of that text file and then added a timestamp to it. So in this video, we're going to write another builder which takes a markdown file and converts it to HTML. We're going to be using this package on pub.dev called Markdown. And what it does is it takes a Markdown text and then it converts it to HTML. So I'm going to install that quickly. I'll copy this bit and then. OK, so once I've added it, I can save and I need to cd into code generators, run pubget to update my dependencies. So now that Markdown is installed, we can proceed to writing our builder. So if you remember in the, uh, the first video, we write our builder by extending the base abstract class called builder. So under source, I'm going to create a new file and we'll call it markdown to HTML dot dot. And in here, we'll import the build package and then import also the markdown package. So now what we'll do is we'll create our class, call it markdown to HTML builder, which extends the base class called builder. So now we need to implement two of its members using the override annotation. So one of it is a map and this map type is called build extensions, which if you remember from the previous video, we configure our extensions and the output we expect to be produced from it. So we'll be looking for markdown files, which have got a .md extension, and then we will be producing .html files from it. And then the second member we need to implement is our build method. So that returns a feature of type void, and then it's called build. And this function gives us an instance of our build step and we mark this as async and now we're ready to implement our build method. So first thing that we need to do here is we need to grab the object matching our input file. So in other words, that is our asset ID and then we need to create a new target asset ID. So like I mentioned in the previous video, an asset ID contains information about files that are matched about our markdown files that are matched. So essentially, we're going to grab a reference to that markdown file, grab its contents, and then use the utility function from our markdown package to convert it to HTML. And the last thing we'll do is to write out the new asset. So let's do that now. So in order to grab our object, we need to do our input ID, and then we grab the input ID from our build step. So this is an asset ID object. And then what we'll do is create a variable called copy. And then we'll change the extension on our assets to .html. So calling change extension actually produces a new asset ID. So it creates a new object, but the extension is .html. So that means from this new asset ID, we're going to grab the contents of this matched markdown file and convert it to HTML. And then we'll write the output to this one, to this asset ID. So secondly, we will create another variable called contents. We'll await on build step. We'll call the reader string method, and then we'll pass in the currently matched markdown file. And then once we've done that, we can now write our asset by doing await build step dot write a string. So this method takes in an asset ID, which will be this new file. And then secondly, will be the contents that we wish to put in there. So we need to invoke the markdown to HTML function from our markdown package to convert our contents. And now we have our basic implementation 
for converting Markdown to HTML. Secondly, what we need to do is to come back to code generators and just as we've defined a top level function for our builder to invoke, we need to define a top level function for our Markdown to HTML builder. So we'll just call it Markdown to HTML builder. This also accepts uh, builder options and then we just need to return a new instance of Markdown to HTML Builder and also not forgetting to import the Dart file. Okay, so I'll save this. So now that we have our top level function, the next thing we need to do is to register our Builder and that brings us to our build.yaml file. So just as we've registered our copy builder, we're also gonna register our markdown builder here. And what we'll do is we'll define our import, which is the Dart file containing our, our builder function. We need to define the factory function that will be invoked when this builder runs. And we called it markdown to HTML builder, I believe. Uh, yeah, this one. And now we need to define our build extensions, which is a map containing the files we are matching and the output we're looking to produce from that. So .html. And next, what we need to do is to define where we want to build this to. For this example, we'll build to source. And lastly, we'll define how we wish to apply this builder. So for now, we'll just set it to the root package, which is this one. Okay, so now that we've registered our builder, we need to next define a build target. I'll just copy this one and call it back down to HTML builder. And we say enable to true. I need to set this to Markdown to HTML Builder. Okay, so let's save this now. And to test it, let's create a basic Markdown file and our lib directory. I'll call it example.md. And then in here, we'll have some basic Markdown. We should now be able to test our builder. Make sure that you've CD'd into code generators. And then we'll do pub run build runner build so here is our example html produced from our markdown so let's modify our markdown builder to produce a fully valid html file because although this has html it's lacking the html tag the head tag and body tag and so on and so forth what you would expect in an actual html file so we can do that by coming back to our markdown to HTML builder. When it comes to where we are writing out our new asset, we can modify the content here using a multi-level string. And let's produce our HTML. And for this bit, we need to use interpolation like that to ensure this function runs. And let's save this. Let's run our builder again. Okay, so now in our HTML, we have the required tags produced. And I just realized I'm missing that. So let's save it, let's run it again. And now we've got it there. Okay, so the Next thing I want to talk about is if we come back to code generators, each of these functions exposes a an options, a map of options, and what's known as a builder options object. So builder options is essentially a map containing configuration or metadata we can pass into our builders. We can take advantage of this when we come to uh, build.yaml and uh, our targets we can configure some options for it and then for our options we can set anything for it so 
we'll set a page title for instance and then we'll set the author to myself so let's save this so what would happen is that when our build function runs the options we've set here will be added to a map object which can be accessed from builder options and in order to access that what we need to do is come back to our builder define a constructor for this our constructor will accept an options object and this options object will be a builder options type so that means that we can access our options in here so for now i'll just print out options and then dot config so let's save this and we'll come back here and we'll make sure that we pass our options in here so let's run our build and let's see what we get from our configuration okay so you can see that our options have been logged out right over here in the console output we've got our page title we've got our author so what that means for us is that in our markdown to html now we can modify our output slightly by doing so let's say in our head we can have a title for title we will just extract our title from options config i believe i called it page title and then let's add a meta tag named author and set its contents to options.config author so i'll save this and let's run our builder again and see what that produces all right based on our options we've been able to pass that into our builder and that of course affects our produced html file and let's just refactor this slightly so instead of doing options.config everywhere i'll just create, create a variable called config and just do options.config which means we can just do config the last thing I want to do is to create a separate package package to consume this builder because in a real life scenario you probably wouldn't want to be generating your output in the same project that your builders have been implemented or defined. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I'll do is create another folder in here and just call it example usage and in here I'll create a pubspec.yaml file. Let's give it a name. I'll call it code generators example description and let's define the dev dependencies list so this will depend on build runner so that we can run the build from this file and we we'll set the version to 1.6.5 whichever the version is in this file okay 1.6.6 let's do that and then we will define a dependency on this package here so it's called code generators and of course because it's right here on our file system we can define a path to it so the path will come back one folder and then it's code generators so that should do then i'll save this and then under here i will create a new folder call it web and this folder will contain these files so i'll copy these two and i'll pull it in here and i'll d delete these two files oh and i think i and i'll delete the web file in code generators and i think i mistakenly deleted the text file so let's create it again and let's add some lorem ipsum text okay that will do so now let's try and run the builder from example usage and the last thing in fact we need to do in order to enable us to run this the builder here is we come back to our build.yaml file in here and in fact i'll remove the options from here and then what we want to do is to set the auto apply key to the pendant and do that here as well this means that we're able to use this builder now in the example package so i'll save that and i'll close that folder in example usage now we need to create a build.yaml file and we need to define a build target starts by defining the targets key start by setting the defining package name which in this case is code generators example and then the name of our target which will just give it the same name and then we'll define our builders followed by our options define page title again and then we'll set the author again okay so let's save this and then let's try and run this again so i will cd to example usage and then let's try running this 
again oh yeah of course we need to update our packages so let's do that once our packages are updated we can now run the build runner command again so from our txt file we've got our text file with the timestamp and then from our example markdown file we've got our html with our build options passed in of course in here essentially we can get rid of enabled true because it's enabled in here so here i could use this same option generate for we generate for files within the web directory and then we'll do the same for markdown to html builder so as long as our markdown files are in the web directory the builder would run for those files if it's anywhere else it won't all right so i'm gonna end the video here thanks for watching if you enjoyed it do hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon so that you're updated when new videos are released this is a series so i'm gonna be making more videos on this thanks for watching